title piece for Lovely and Suffering. I want to stop dreaming their names. I want to stop breathing their last words. I want to stop washing my hands for 20 seconds of what's going on and precious Lord, take my hand. I want to stop sitting on conference calls, numb or crying because another fake 911 lynching murder was top news when I turned on my phone. I tell a lot of lies about allergies these days. I want to be able to call Brianna's name without aching and being sick, crying for two hours. I need people to stop reminding me that Jesus was a rebel. Jesus was a warrior. Keep my savior's name out of your mouth if you cannot use it properly. I am exhausted in the search for just a bit more calm, just a little more reasons. I am not out of patience. I am finished being patient. I am tired of warning you to learn the difference. There is nothing more volatile than a black woman who has made friends with both her beauty and her pain. And we are lovely and suffering right now. We are lovely and suffering right now. We are lovely and suffering right now. switch up the pace a little bit and do something from, follow me on this, Louisiana baptism. I got baptized in Louisiana. Sunday school teaching, white glove wearing daughter of a gospel man. And I had been to the water, but not baptized till then. Now, Baton Rouge is a pretty city. Nice people, great food, down home south where the men are to die for and the women do their hair. Baton Rouge is a pretty place. Trees and flowers and all around you, water. Whispering, beckoning still, like ghosts or bad luck. Now, I'm a sand and beaches girl. Saw all that water and decided on total immersion decided to wash myself clean in a new moment, new passion, new possibility. And I studied that water, gazed for hours, dipped my fingers, counted swamp stops, watched mute as it fell and fell from the bluest sky, save one that I have ever seen. I clenched my courage beneath my teeth, opened my arms and begged to be received. The preacher man was called time, wrinkled ashen with the strength of centuries and fear and pride and salvation. I gave myself over to his grace on my back and shoulders and he laid me down in water, black as stolen jewels, black as a fiddler with bad intentions, black as a demon wedding flowers into my sister's death by stroke and stubborn. I was glad for it. She wouldn't have wanted to live anymore, not that way. I ached because of it, because my nephews bled tears. I bled memories, most of them about what a pretty baby she'd been, what a brilliant beauty she'd become. Her passing didn't make me want to go. Just put me into slow shock and lagging pain and glad she had gone on. Time brought me up to breathe. Sable at hands and throat. Bid the choir on shore sing, pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. And he did lay me down in water red as bloody sunsets. Water red as a lying whore's mouth. Water red like sick and leaking fire. Sharks swam in that water. Carrion died for my time, talent, soul. Counted coup and illness and betrayal of trust and promises made that were ever going to be kept. Promises I was stupid and loyal enough to believe washed away in cold, 
foul, bitter water that tore over my skin and heart like a sludge of sand and burning sugar. Time brought me up to choke on clean air, choke on hope and wishes. Time brought me up to confess all I had done or not said or said before and laid me down for the third and last time and water moving so fast that houses buckled, lives were raised and thrown aside like trash, water gray as unwanted destiny, water gray as diamonds losing their only light, water infecting and filthy and dangerous, moving, killing, destroying, taking away any innocence of 15 years, furnishings, trinkets, my best friend, 15 years, not just des destroyed, not just damaged by the power of a hard rain with no thought but to demand a cleansing. Time raised me up, called me daughter, marked me with a kiss that infected my leg and robbed me of clear eyesight, shook my heart into something that drifts on the wind and will not come home, not yet. I came back washed in water, covered and colored like blood and fear, black with loss, black like dying stars and burned promises, infected and hopeless. Time baptized me and delivered me here to heal. The sun remembers my name, but not my face. Not yet. I am still helplessly in love with sand and beaches, but I shiver sick just a little, shiver cold and sick and terrified just a little, whenever a hard rain falls down. Um, let's see, this is Karen, because you know, we got to throw a Karen poem in there. Karen, and I have three of them, but I'm only doing this one. Karen, your mammy done left the building, part two. On a scale of one to 10, one being back away slowly from the cookout, nobody needs to get hurt. And 10 being the offering physical violence to elders, as in, I will slap your grandma and mine in the middle of Main Street at high noon for this. My irritation level is at about 45 and rising. All this crying and pearl clutching got me in a non-conciliatory frame of mind. Miss me with that noise, please. Why is my pain only validated by your distress? When black, brown women cry for their babies, why is it necessary for white tears to validate the experience? Is it because we've done it so often that our tears are invisible, don't count anymore? Why is any conversation always at your behest? We've been wanting to talk for centuries now. Why are our lives suddenly worth taking notice because you finally decided to take notice? Well then, it must be important. Check it. One white woman got upset one morning, spilled her coffee, got national headlines, and changed the law. We get up upset every morning, every hour of every day, spill all the tea, and get called gossips, abrasive, nasty, and non-pleasing. I was raised up careful, well-born, and well-bred. So the most I can say to that is you may personally kiss it right here, because F that is. Yeah, go on and laugh, but I have ancestors to answer to. Sorry, Grandma. Speaking for sisters everywhere, keep our names out of your mouths because in case you hadn't got the memo, whatever you start, we are going to finish. Don't waste your tears on trying to impress us with your pain. We live where you only visit and tourists, quite frankly, are not welcome. Sisters bleed, bond, and back each other up. Y'all want to eat the cake and not clean up the kitchen. Then get upset when your dainty selves catch hands or our ambitious dreams without stopping to drink at the river of your opinions. Some of y'all so weak, can't even take a Becky between the eyes. 
Can't get hit with the truth without crying about your stress level. Keep self-importantly screaming, you're the one making it about race. Well, yeah. Because it is. It always has been. You want to call me sister? Prove you fight like I do. That's right. You have to prove it. Don't want to see your pink cat hat or your notorious RBG t-shirt. Show me oppression turned into beauty marks like children with full bellies and laws that protect everybody. Show me relationships full of truth, not convenience. Show me your soul's tears hit the earth and birth renewable energies like gold and water and real love. You want me to call you sister? Listen to me. Stop using me. Celebrate who I am without making me use your mirror. Back me up, honor, and sing my songs too. Stop trying to be me when it suits or is fashionable. Just be real. Do you. And if that sounds like too much, well, let's put it this way. If after using my milk to suckle your children, after raising those children so they could sell or slave me and mine, after scrubbing your floors and clothes so you could go to fundraisers where I got talked about as the problem, after being given the back seat in movements I bled out over, after moving ahead as an exemplar of my sisters, only be judged by the standards by which the world celebrates everything you do or say or decide to be, if after all that you decide that I'm ungrateful or impatient or too angry, you know what? You may personally can unreservedly kiss it right there because F that is. Sorry, Grandma. I've got, y'all are sweet. I've got two more pieces for you. Um, I do this one every time because it has to be done every time and it will until, because this is Brianna's song, lyric two. Twenty-seven erased by eight equals blood on Daniel Cameron's hands. Twenty-seven erased by eight equals no more dreaming and still no justice, even now. Twenty-seven erased by eight only equals more struggle and rest in power, and I know that mother's tears falling century down century did not keep you safe. I am sorry that our soft voices and white gloved hands and choir singing were not enough to keep you safe. Sorry that trying to fit into this tapestry, sorry that trying to fit in, sacrificing to fit into this supposedly sweet and welcoming tapestry was not enough. Our not being angry was not enough to keep you breathing. And I don't know what you had planned for your birthday but I do know that you were a woman, not a symbol. I know that sometime you must have fussed with your hair, fussed at your man, fussed about your job, got loud with your girls, got out in the streets singing and swinging and blinging so you could forget about your day, laid up in the bed some days, watching the rain, made love, made plans. I know that as a black woman, there were some days you couldn't take it anymore. Felt like you couldn't see one more horror, but you stayed in the game. Went back the next day and did your job. There were days when you just got tired of being a black woman because that's what black women do. That's what and who we are. We did everything. We were supposed to be trusted and prayed and held our heads up and made way out of no way. We took it. We worked with it. We held on, held it down, did the work, held it down, held it together, held on and on and on while this country, this place did every wicked thing it could to tear us apart. We 
did everything we could, used every way we know, every day and night, living the way we are supposed to live to save our children, and it still wasn't enough. Our holding it down, fighting the system, setting streets on fire, soft words, bowed heads, white gloves, swallowed humiliations and words and tears and song and suffering wasn't enough. The way we have been told we need to live our entire lives wasn't enough. You were still not safe. You were our daughter, our auntie our little sister, no, not our mother, never anyone's mother. We tried everything. You died anyway. Right now you are on your way to becoming an icon. Your name will go down as a martyr to the cause. I am truly sorry for that because no one deserves such a hellish honor. 27 erased by eight should not equal political expedience. Cover-ups, lies does not justify or explain the dirt they tried to bury you with. 27 erased by eight and wrong and a mother who will never sleep again because her baby sleeps too young and forever. Why? Why? For what? All she wanted, all anyone ever wants to be is human, flawed and free and human, flawed and alive and free to be human. And the very last piece that I have for you is, as usual, you know, this is actually the, the piece that has ended almost every show that I have ever done in 30 years, almost, you know, I've been doing this for 40, but this has been ending every show for just about 25, 30 years. The usual question is why? What made you be a poet? I've heard about how death turns some people, jail time, bad fortune. I can't claim any of that. I am a poet because even at five, you know when the Lord is talking to you. I am a poet because God laid his hand on me and said, here am I, now speak. So if you hear something in this poem, you know and believe, say amen. If you hear something you don't know but want to believe, say well. And if you don't know and can't believe, then tip your waiter and prove you tried to keep Trump the hell out of office so you will have done something useful with your sorry self. I am a poet because love laid its light on my parents' marriage. They held each other's hearts like jewels, polished with five girls, money problems, fights, and good times, so that when my mother said no to the chemo, no to the surgery, no to the cancer, she died smiling in my father's arms. I am a poet because every seven seconds a woman is raped, because every two minutes a child is molested, because every half hour somebody dies alone. And every hour on the hour, government commits genocide while big business pats itself on the back. Because I applaud innovation, but tradition is the fire at which my soul warms itself. I am a poet because my nephew smiles, hang the stars. I have friends and sisters whose personal job is in life to mess with me all the time. Because my baby misses me 
so bad when I'm away and loves me back home so sweet. I am a poet because using the language properly is like good sex. If you can't stroke it, kiss it, taste it, and then lay it down until it screams with every intended passion, keep your damn mouth shut. I am a poet because of Aretha Franklin, Langston Hughes, Mahalia Maya, and Dylan Thomas. Maddie Evans, Sonia Sanchez, Gunther Babieri, Nora Jones, Duke Ellington, Nikki Giovanni, and Shaka Khan. Because of Alexander Dumas, Per Ehis, Raymond Chandler, Tina Marie, and Johann Sebastian Bach. I am a poet because when Smokey sang, let me be the clock for the time of your life. Every woman in the world said TikTok, baby. I am a poet because when I was wrong, my parents did not medicate therapy or offer alternative behaviors. They smacked my hand, whipped my butt, and made me hold my head up to say, I'm sorry. I am a poet because I am a black woman in a white world whose prayers to the ancestors bring down fire from the sky that I kiss into the diamonds I want to hang in your ears because the words retard, fag, slut, nigga bitch are still accepted and recognized parts of conversation. I am a poet because Sacagawea got jacked up on the gold dollar, Cleopatra was a sister, and because rejecting European standards of beauty, I roll out every morning so damn fine that I am illegal in all 50 states and most of the U.S. territory. I am a poet because I know, because I know God, because I know he laid his hand on me and said, here am I. Now speak. <laughs>